Welcome to Unit 2, Lesson 2, Part 2. All right, well, we left off here with writing equations of polynomials, functions, in real life. All right, so as a little bit of a refresher, we've done this type of thing before. So let's just rip through it. We've got this and two more problems, and then we're done because the rest of the packet, I believe, is, is homework. I'm not going to do. Um, Given the data on monthly snowfall in Rochester, make a scatter plot and find a quadratic model that best fits this data. Round all coefficients to the nearest 10,000th. Oh, that's a little excessive. So, whenever I see quadratic model of best fit, that tells me I need a regression. Specifically, a quadratic regression because they tell me quadratic right there. And that tells me I'm going to have to do the stat, edit, et cetera, et cetera. Okay? So before I even do that, let's go ahead and make our scatter plot because they ask us to make a scatter plot with the information they give us. Here's the table. Now notice my month is going to be my X and my inches of snowfall is going to be my Y. And please note that October, it's not 10. I know it's the 10th month on the calendar, but for our purpose, it is the first month that we record our data. So we're going to call October 1. November is our second month, and so forth. So if I look at the little axis they provided over here, I know the origin where I start is going to be 0. And I really only got to go up to 7 my x-axis. So I'm just going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to write those numbers down there to match. And if I want, I can put, I can label that, which would be a good thing for us to do. That's our month. Now let's take a look at our snowfall in inches, our y value. Okay, this is our x-axis, the left and right. This is our y-axis. Now, I go as high as 28.2. When I did this lesson in class, I counted by sevens. I went 7, 14, 21, and 28. But for the sake of this video lessons, I'm going to count by fives and go to 30 because I want to include this 28.2. Now, if you go to 28, if I made this high as 28, I can still put 28.2 you know, uh, slightly above that. I'm okay. But for the sake of our calculator, if we wanted to make a window, we want to see that. I want to be above it. So I'm going to go to 30 by 5s. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. So I'm going to go ahead and label those. 20, 25, 30. Now I'm just going to go ahead and put my points in. Let's use red, shall we? Now I'm going to put 1. That's pretty much one zero. That is going to be sitting right there. I'm going to go two seven point three. Two seven point three. That's between five and ten. We'll call it there. Three twenty one point eight. Okay, big jump. Three twenty one is just above twenty. So I will go ah, maybe right there. That looks legit. Four twenty eight point two. So I go to four, and I'm almost to thirty up here. Uh, maybe right there. Looks good. 5, 21.5. So 5 is almost the same height as the dot above 3 on the x-axis. Uh, 6, 16.3. So 6, a little bit above 15 right there. And 7 is back to 3.9. So it's almost 5 right around there. That's our scatter plot. Not too shabby. Okay. Not too shabby considering we did it by hand. So now we need to take these values, highlighter, oh, I'm going to put my X values in L1, and I'm going to put my Y values in L2. How come I'm going to do that? This is L2. Oh, that's a weird L. And this is L1. Because now I need to come up with that regression they asked me about, okay? We need to come up with our 
quadratic regression. They want a quadratic model that best fits our data here. Okay? And before I do that, I'm going to scroll down here. Da, 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 da. Talk with your neighbor to see if this is a good model. How can we tell? Now find a cubic model. All right? So if I want to find if this is a good model, I know I'm going to have to refer to that R2 variable. Okay? So I'm going to make sure that I turn that on in the calculator before I even come up with my equation so I don't have to backtrack. All right? So let's find our regression and make sure our calculator gives us that R2 model. So what I've done, I've took the liberty, okay, let's turn this bad boy, let's minimize this, let's turn the bad boy on, and there it is. If I go to stat, edit, you're going to see I've already entered in my data. Let's move over here. Whatever this table is, highlighted in yellow and blue, is on my calculator, all right? In fact, if you're watching this on a smartphone and it's kind of hard to see the calculator, why don't I do this? So now it's easier for you to see. These are my months and my inches in snowfall. Okay? Now I said we want to make sure we have our R2 variable. Don't forget, I want to go to mode. And if I, I can scroll down, but if I scroll up, it's quicker. I want to go to stats diagnostics. It is by default off. All you need to do is bang, turn it on. Now it's on. So let's go to stats, edit, there's our table. We want to calculate. We want to have our calculator compute or calculate our quadratic regression. So now I go to stats and I move over to calculate. Now if you still haven't finished putting in the table, if you're like, this guy, I'm freaking out, man, pause the video. Okay, put in the table, then hit play again. All right, so stat, calculate, and don't forget, I want number five. I want number five here. I want the quadratic regression. So I'm going to pick number five. Boom. And I am going to calculate this. And now not only does it give me my quadratic regression, but the last line here is that's my R squared variable. That's good. So I'm going to go here. And they want this written to the nearest ten thousandths. That's four decimal places, okay? Again, I say this every time we round. The amount of really good students that go fast and screw up rounding is crazy. So let's not screw up rounding. Even though I need four decimal places, I need to look at the fifth decimal place to know if my fourth decimal place is going to stay the same or round up. So y equals my a values times x squared. So it's negative 2.651. This one will round up to a 2 because the number after it is 5 or bigger. 6512x squared, right? Plus bx. Okay, b is 22.2488. That second 8 will remain an 8. Because the number after it is less than 5. 2, 4, 8, 8. X plus C. My C is negative, so instead of saying plus a negative, which I can, you can do that and you'd be fine. I am just going to say minus 21.8142. That 2 will round up to a 3 because the number after it is 8. It's 5 or bigger. So... 8143. There you go. That is my quadratic regression for the points that we have in that scatter plot. Now, talk with your neighbor. Is this a good model to use? Blah, blah, blah. Hey, neighbor, is this a good model to use? I don't know, man. I don't know how to tell. You're supposed to put that R squared thing that Vista talked about. I don't even know how to do it. He, he said, what are you doing? What are you sleeping in class? What the hell's the matter with you? He just said you got to go to stats diagnostic. Do you not pay attention? I, I don't sometime. i got to get better at that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, the R squared is. Okay? I tease because I love. My R squared is, let's call it 9.93. 
I'm going to say, yes, that's a good model. Now, here's what I don't like. Here's what I don't like. All right. When we get to stats and we get to the bell curve, okay, with normal distribution, 95% or better is considered the standard of something that's an expectation to happen. Okay, will something happen if it's 95% or better? If, is this an odd event? Is this like an unlikely event or is this likely to happen? Okay, 95% is the mark. Yet when it comes to determining if an equation is, uh, you know, a good fit, this R squared just has to be somewhat close to 1. So 0.93 is close to 1. Okay, so yes, it's a good model to use. I know in Algebra 1, They've even, I've even read in a book or paper somewhere that 0 0.8, I mean, that's closer to 1, so that makes it a good fit. 0 0.2 obviously is not. So I would say anything in the 90s, like 0 0.90 or higher, even 0 0.8 something, as long as it's somewhat close to 1, it would be a good fit. So we're going to say, yes, this is a good fit because our R squared is close to 1. It's 0.93. All right. How can we tell? Well, because... R squared is close to 1. All right. Now find a cubic model. All right. Well, let's, let's, well, let's do this. And believe it or not, we almost have everything done. We already have our table, our L1 and L2, it's in there. The only difference that we need to make here, the only different thing we need to do is when we calculate, we don't want a quadratic they are now asking us for a cubic. And I'm going to calculate. And there it is. Okay. Let's bring this back right here. Okay, find a cubic model. All right. Uh, God, four decimal places. So, y equals. Okay, my a value, which is negative 0.13. Okay, 136. 1, that will stay a 1 x cubed, all right, plus b, x squared, well, my b is negative, so I'm going to say minus 1.0178, that 8 will round up, because the number after it is 5, so 1, 7, 8 will round up to a 9, x squared, all right, plus cx, so plus 16.6682, that 2 will round up to a 3, so 6, 6, 8, 3, x, oh, God, plus d, which is negative, minus 16.9142. That 2 will round up to a 3 as well because the number after it is 5 or bigger. It's 8. So it is 9143. My goodness gracious. There it is. Is this a better model? My r squared is 0.94. All right. So, is this a better model than the quadratic? I'm going to temporarily, oh boy, when I move this, that's going to stay. So let's get rid of all this, just for the time being. Let's move this out of the way. My R squared, oh, I didn't even write it down. It was 9, 3, oh, I erased it. That's what happened. Let's move this off to the side. Let's not forget this was 0 0.93, okay? Yes, because r squared is close to 1, okay? So is this a better model? Yes. How come the cubic is better? Because its r squared is closer to 1 than the quadratic's r squared, all right? If you want to say, you can say 0.94 is bigger, than 0.93, but the way I would write it is 0.94 is closer to 1 than 0.93, okay? They're both good models, but the cubic happens to be a better fit, all right? That was a lot to go over considering it was review, huh? Huh? All right, on to the next one. Trust me, the next one's a lot easier. And by a lot easier, I mean they're quicker. The other one really wasn't that difficult. If I was doing this without explaining, that would have taken me like two, three minutes. All right? Instead, with all the explanations and using the board, it took 15. Crazy. So, 
find a cubic function going through the points, blah, 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 blah. Then we've got to find a quadratic function going through the points, blah, 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 blah. Okay? Uh, any rounding is to the thousandths place. Okay, this is telling me that's three decimal places. Okay, three decimal places if we need to. Um, and all this is is stat, edit, stat, calc. They're not asking if it's a good fit, anything. All we got to do is come up with uh, some functions. So let's do this. And I'm going to go here. Oh, I'm going to go here. I'm going to lower this bad boy so we can see. Oh, we can't. All right, so I'm going to have to switch it this way. I'm going to put this here. I'm going to put this here. And first, we are going to find our cubic function. Okay? Cubic function. So, what I like to do, second plus seven, one, two, that resets everything. And I am going to stat, edit, bang. And I'm just going to put, these are my x values, zero, one, two, and negative one. Please do not forget, my L1 should be my x's. These are my x's, okay? I don't want to put negative three in my L1 list. I only want my x's. Negative three is a y. That will go on my L2 lists, okay? All the y's, all right? So let's just be careful not to mess it up because it's really just that simple. Bang, bang. And we're going to go for our L1 list. Zero. Bang. Uh, one. Two. Negative one. There you go. Pretty simple. For a Y list, it's negative three. It's negative one. Uh, five. And negative seven. Did I do that right? They all appear to be right. Let's stat. Calc. A cubic, which is number six. Okay, so number six. Um, bang, 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 bang. Oh, man, simple. Love it. We'll go here. Look at this out. Yep, that's my marker. It fell down. Y equals, okay, my A times X to the third. So that's 1 X to the third. I don't have to write 1 as a lead coefficient. If you want to, you can. It's not wrong, but we're math people. Let's write it the way we expect to see it if it were on a short answer, all right? Minus, okay, well, it's plus B, which is a negative 1. So minus 1X squared, so minus 1X squared. Again, I don't have to write the 1. Plus our C times X, so it's plus 2X, plus D, which is minus 3. There you go. Got to love it. Told you it was going to be much easier. Now they want us to find a quadratic for the second one. So, again, if we want to clear all this stuff out, second plus seven, one, two, 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 it's good, it's good, it's good. And we, oh, it's just off. So let's minimize this a little bit. Wow, that was a lot. Bam. Now we're going to do these, and oh, there we go. We actually have them all. Yeah, there. Stat, edit. My X is negative two. Three and zero. Now I want to put my Y's. Negative 16. 11. And two. And they want us to come up with what? A quadratic. So I'm going to do stat, calc, and I'm going to pick quadratic, which is number five. Bang, bang, bang. There we go. Do, 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 do. There it is. Oh, my God. I mean, guys, you know, I want students to complain about stuff, and it's really just easy to do. And I'm like, oh, my God, guys, just do it. Okay, so here we go. Y equals my A, which is negative 1.2, because that's my A, times X squared. Plus B times X. Okay, my B is 6.6. .6. All right, plus C, which is 2. There you go. I think the rest of this is homework and classwork. So let's go back here. I'm not going to do the rest of it. You're going to do the rest of it. That's our video. Great. Lesson 2 is not complete.
Okay, I'll see you for lesson three. Adios, be good, and uh, hey, don't forget to do that last second Christmas shopping. Because right now, it's uh, December 19th. Oh, God. oh, my God. If I was a math teacher, I can calculate how many more days till Christmas. Six! Six! There's six days. Have a good one. See ya.